Pickle, hit the air right side. It's time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout. Of course, when we overreact to the football weekend, and there is quite a bit to overreact to this week. Um, and so we will start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one upon further review. And, and I think that it is because of the nature of this season mm-hmm. and because of the fact that 6A and 5A started later than 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A, it is easy to forget that at most we have only seen the big schools play four games. And most of them, in fact, rounding up almost all of them, have not played four games. They played three, or they played two, or they played one. Or some of them, they played zero. So it's important to remember that we're still figuring a lot of things out for these big schools, for 6A and 5A. And I thought that there were a couple of really important data points that we got from a number of contenders this week in the big school ranks that kind of fill out, they kind of color in the sketch so far. I think one of them, for example, was Galena Park North Shore. And their win over Manville, forty-nine to fourteen, because one of the things that we talked about coming into the se- uh, coming into the season, and then through the first three weeks, is offense not a problem, looking good. Demetrius Davis, Shadrick Banks, all those guys looking really good. Defense for North Shore, mm, yeah, that's eh, fine. It's okay. I thought that was a really Im- impressive performance against Manville. Mm-hmm. Now, that to me quells any sort of concern that you have that the defense is going to be what costs them, uh, you know, uh, uh, at least for now. Yeah, I when I got back to my hotel room and looked at that score on scoreboard, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, there answers the question of we really can't say much other than North Shore's pretty good at football. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Cedar Hill's win over Alito 27-17 to um, reinforced one thing, which is I think their defense is really darn good. Mm-hmm. And I think that it also – uh, reassured an early fear, which is, is this a team that's just going to struggle to get out of the gates offensively? Now, I don't think they played a complete game offensively. I thought they, they made some mistakes. But I do think that the offense showed up, and especially showed up early. I thought that was one thing. I also thought that Highland Park's win over Rockwall mm-hmm. was very impressive most notably from the defensive side. They held Rockwall to 18 points. That's a Rockwall team that had been lighting fools up. Oh, yeah. And they held them down, just just locked down that defense. That was extremely impressive in my mind. And to me, another important data point uh, it, when judging a contender like that. Um, yeah, the, you know, th- that's one thing to keep in mind is that we are still in the early days yet of the 6A and 5A ranks. And as a result... We're still learning a lot. Mm-hmm. We're still figuring out a lot for these teams. And as a result, it, I think it's important to, to make sure we're, we're taking taking all of these data points in a whole. Second big thought. Forget style points. It's week nine. <laughs> no, you no, no. You should forget that. Well, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I mean this for college football, okay? If you look across the – college football landscape this week Mm -hmm. you had some teams that i thought got some good wins i thought especially well the the only teams that did win from the state of texas Mm -hmm. smu beat tulane a&m beat mississippi state north texas beat middle tennessee important wins i think for all three of them yeah okay smu stays unbeaten especially in american athletic conference play a&m gets a big road win kind of making sure that they're lost to their other win versus florida doesn't go just in the flash in the pan. North Texas comes back and gets, a, I think, a critical win over Middle Tennessee. All three of them were butt ugly. Yes. Oh, it All was, three of them. It was just gross. All three. SMU, SMU just did not look very good the whole game and then ended up pulling out the win against Tulane. Mm-hmm. North Texas was down... Huge and looked like they were going to get boat raced. Oh yeah, it was twenty-one to seven at the end of the first. Ended up terrible. coming back and, and finding a way back. We'll talk about one of their key components in a moment, but there was that. And A and M, the offense just like fits and starts, fits and starts, trying to figure things out. But bottom line is, they all got wins. You stumble into a win, and you know what? For all three of those teams, those are conference wins. 
That is not going to be a game that Kellen Mond puts in his dream journal. But you know what? It's going to go down as a W. That's the most important thing. So that is thought number two. Thought number three, the crevasse deepens. Okay. Crevasse is a good word. We knew that the 2020 season was going to be weird, especially with the staggered start. Mm -hmm. I think this week is when it really comes into focus, the giant gap between where these two seasons in Texas high school football are. Okay? For the small schools, we're in week nine. Yes. Okay? We're in crunch time. Oh, yeah. Everyone, literally, everyone's in district play. Everyone. All of them are in district play. All of them, these are critical games that are going to decide playoff seedings. It is crunch time. For the small school, or for the big schools, it's only five. And it's like, it's important. You need to go out there and win. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anybody is going to mistake that for, like, crunch time. We can see the playoffs from here for the small schools. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're two weeks away. Three they're weeks right away. there, right? We can see them from here. For 6A and 5A, I think that that is still off over yonder. Oh, yeah. And I think that this week, it, that, that, that big gap, that big crevasse, if you will, is very pronounced that these games are going to have a different feel mm-hmm. for the small schools than for the big schools. And I think that this week really brings into focus. Next week, almost every one of the big schools are going to be in district play. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and then you could really say, okay, well, now it's crunch time. Like, we're getting into the back half of the season for them. We're still in the first half of the season for them. Right. We're still in the first half. We are in, like, we are, the, the landing gear is down mm-hmm. for small schools. And so, as a result, like, that is, to me, a very stark difference that is now, it was always there. And now, I think that it really comes into focus this week that you've got these games that are going to mean a lot more to the small schools than necessarily they do for the big schools. If you're a small school and you got problems, you better figure it out quick. <laughs> and you I can, figure it, start figuring it out right now. And I can tell you too from it seems like every week I switch from covering big school to small mm-hmm. school, big school, and the conversations that I have with the coaches on the Mondays or Tuesdays mm-hmm. of the the week before the game are such in different tones. Yeah. I mean, you can just see it clear as day. When I covered Flower Mound last week, he was like, eh, you know, this we can learn some stuff from this. When you cover Salado and China Spring, it's like this is the game of the yeah. season for them. And it's 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 weird to flip the switch in your brain. <laughs> Those are my three big thoughts. Three helmet stuff stickers, rather. A helmet sticker for junction defensive back Isaiah Gonzalez. With 14 tackles, two forced fumbles, three interceptions, and returned two of them for touchdowns for Junction. Junction, a winner this week. A helmet sticker for the man who may have saved North Texas this season. Quarterback Jason Bean. He balled. Um, I don't know what's going on with Austin Ani. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but he, he had a rough go. He had a rough go. They bring in Jason Bean, and he pulled them from the depths. And okay. they have the highest number of <laughs> offensive yards that they've ever had. 181 yards history. and two touchdowns passing, 169 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. He balled out. And I don't know what happened. I'm not going to speculate. But that was extremely impressive from Jason Bean. I think he saved North Texas this season. And a helmet sticker for Dallas Molina linebacker Matt Perez. 16 tackles, three tackles for loss, and a forced fumble. Molina wins their first district game since 2017. Mm-hmm. Impressive on the back Very of their cool. defense, led by Matt Perez. Three teams to worry about. Let's talk about Pottsboro. Yeah. Pottsboro goes to overtime with Mineola. They cough up like a 21-point fourth quarter lead, mm-hmm. go to overtime and lose. Um, and now, by the way, we're two weeks away from their game with, with, um, with Mount Vernon. Mm-hmm. So the defense obviously buckled at some point. They've got to figure that out defensively because – there's still big challenges offensively down the road for them. So, um, yeah, Pottsboro, team to worry about. Texas State, and it's just, it's it's the same song, different verse for Texas State. Just uh, can't finish. It, 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 it's, it's a matter of they can't put together a complete game. Mm-hmm. This week I thought Brady McBride was actually okay. But then they weren't able to run the ball. Nope. And the defense 
was not able to st- especially stop Carlos Davis whenever they needed to on the, on the ground. They weren't able to do that. And as a result, they fall again, and now they're 1-5. and five. That is something that, to me, it's, it's a little disappointing as a team that I wanted to see take a big step forward this year, mm-hmm. in the second year under Spav. Just haven't seen it yet. So, that's something to worry about. And Wink. Good on McKamey. Yeah. McKamey goes and takes down Wink in impressive fashion. Holds them off. That was a game that got hairy late, but McKamey really dominated that game. I thought the graphic was wrong when I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> By how big the point deficit for mo- was for, there. For most of that game, that was, uh, that was, that was, McKamey was in control. But Wink, not able to pull it out, and suddenly they're behind the eight ball and, and looking to finish second in that district. So maybe a little bit of worry for Wink. You know, first loss of the year, but still. Three teams to watch. How about Full Shear? Yeah. Full Shear is now 4-0 and on the year. Uh, they had won just three varsity games their first two seasons. And Coach uh, Olschler Fleming, rather, um, doing a fantastic job. They get a big 33-7 win over Fort Ben Clements. Uh, previously unbeaten Fort Ben Clements. So keep an eye on Full Shear. Keep an eye on Rice. We are now, we are now at crunch time. Okay? Because we've been talking about all year. We've or Not all year. We've been talking about for a minute here. Are we going to see Rice? Is Rice going to play? They've postponed. They've postponed. They've postponed. They've postponed. They've postponed. Well, 2.30 p.m. Saturday is going to come. And they have a scheduled game at home against Middle Tennessee. They are one of a handful of teams, basically, outside of the Big Ten and the Pac-12 that haven't played a game. Will we see them? Legitimately, will we be able to watch them? We'll find out. I don't know. I don't know. know. And finally, keep an eye on Corpus Christi Carroll as the Tigers, the Tigers snap their 25-game losing streak with a big 40-7 win over Corpus Christi. Ray, feel great for the Tigers down there. Keep an eye on them. Great win for them. That, three teams watch, that is Monday Morning Fallout.